PNC, the thinking behind the money. Tonight on Eyewitness News, four sexual assaults in the same area just two days apart have Bucks County Police looking for a suspect. Today marks the 15th anniversary of the MOVE bombing. We will take you back to the neighborhood and to a massive protest. And the Pope reveals a startling secret while visiting Portugal. Good evening, everyone. I'm Denise Saunders. And I'm Ren Scott. Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock begins right now. Live from KYW3 Philadelphia, this is Eyewitness News at 6. Topping Eyewitness News at 6, severe and dangerous weather is moving through our area. Let's get right to Carol Erickson, who has been monitoring the situation all afternoon. Carol? Yeah, Denise, we expected as this cold front moved through the area that we would start to see weather like this, and we certainly are. This is the line of the cold front, and you can see it as it has moved across western Pennsylvania. Right now, this is the cell that we're particularly interested in. This is a, a system right now that in uh, north... Uh, western Cecil County, they are, have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until about 6.30. And then another area right through Berks County until about 6.15, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect there. So you can see that uh, as these storms move towards the east-northeast, that the Philadelphia area could be in line for some of these storms. Now, what do they pack? What kind of a wallop are they packing? Well, at this point, it looks like they can bring hail, some damaging wind, and also some lightning. So there is a severe thunderstorm watch and warning in a lot of the area. You can see the watch area here, which does include the Philadelphia area. To our west, we are looking at the severe thunderstorm warning area where uh, the threat is more immediate. But this watch area goes until 11 o'clock tonight. And once that is over, we're looking for better weather. But I will be back a little bit later and update you as this situation changes minute to minute. Ren and Denise. All right, Carol, in other news, the hunt is on in Bucks County tonight for a man police say is a sexual predator. So far, there have been four attacks on women in the Ben Salem area, and investigators are asking the public to help them track this man down before there are more attacks. And Eyewitness News reporter Beth McDonough is now live in Ben Salem with more. Beth? Well, Ren, Ben Salem police believe that they are looking for the same suspect in four separate attempted sexual assault cases, and apparently that suspect is preying on people who live in the same vicinity as the Pennsylvania State Fair, which, by the way, started just last night. And in fact, one of the victims lives directly across the street. Take a good look at the sexual predator Ben Salem police are trying to find in connection with a series of four sexual assaults in three days. All of the attacks taking place in the morning hours and all of the victims women, ranging in age from 35 to 81. The most recent incident occurred Friday behind this home on Mechanicsville Road. An 81-year-old woman weeding her yard accosted from behind. She struggled and yelled for help. The suspect ran off into the woods. Nicole Bonner lives a few doors down. She says the entire neighborhood is on guard. I'm locking myself in the house. I keep calling my mom and telling her that it's <laughs> coming room and stuff. And she said, just make sure the door, the doors are locked. Another sexual attack happened Friday at the Country Commons apartment. A 36-year-old woman was approached from behind and pinned against her front door. Other residents are scared and circulating the picture of the suspect. It could be anybody. Victims reported two other assaults on Wednesday. One in another apartment complex on Trevos Road. The other jogging along Windsor Drive. All four of the incidents occurring in close proximity to the Pennsylvania State Fair, which is now taking extra precautions to make those who come feel safe. We have taken extra measures here on the ground to alert all of our staff here to watch out for anything that looks suspicious. Um, and they report it to us or security at the time that it's going on. Now, none of those women were seriously hurt, and Ben Salem police tell us that the suspect is still on the loose. So again, here's your chance to take another look at him. He's described as a white male in his late 20s, about 5 feet 5, medium build with a shoulder-length hair. Now, and a scruffy appearance. We should point that out as well. If you think you have seen this man, you are asked to contact Ben Salem police immediately at 215-633-3700. 215-633-3700. Reporting live in Ben Salem, Beth McDonough. KYW3 Eyewitness News. In Philadelphia this afternoon, a protest against alleged police brutality on the anniversary of the MOVE bombing. Dozens of protesters marched from Philadelphia police headquarters to City Hall. The demonstrators cited what they saw as several examples of police terrorism. Various organizations called attention to those incidents in Philadelphia and across the country. This is our our um, group, the Mothers Organized Against Police Terror. The MOVE organization is 15 years stronger than it's ever been, and we're still uniting people to look at not us, 
for some murderous, treacherous ways of this government. Mothers organized against police terror wants a federal investigation into several alleged instances of brutality. Well, as we mentioned, today marks the 15th anniversary of the MOVE bombing, a group known as a black grassroots back-to-nature organization that at the time was at odds with Philadelphia police over a 1978 shooting of a police officer. Eyewitness News reporter Robin Taylor takes a look back at the MOVE incident and how the neighborhood is faring today. On May 13, 1985, police dropped a bomb on the roof of the MOVE compound during a standoff with a radical group. It ignited a fire that burned 61 homes to the ground and left 11 people dead. The homes have long since been rebuilt, but the scars remain. Yeah. Bertie Payne lives on Osage Avenue and remembers what it was like to have the radicals move in. She says they were driving the neighborhood crazy. What were they doing? Everything but the right thing. These days, Ramona Africa, the only adult survivor of the move bombing, remains active in the radical movement. The residents on Osage Avenue aren't angry like Ramona. They're tired, tired of dealing with the city, which they feel mishandled the situation from beginning to end. They put them ho the homes up and it wasn't structurally fit for us yeah. to live in. The homes they live in have been plagued with problems ever since they were rebuilt. Roofs leak, windows need repairing, bricks are cracking, and the work is never done. The residents here on Osage Avenue feel as if they were caught in the middle and still are. Some 15 years after the move bombing, they are still dealing with the aftermath. It's, it's, it's a nightmare that hasn't ended. I'm still here. You know, 11 people dead and gone, but this problem still lives on. The residents aren't sure who to blame. Many wish they had never heard of move. For 15 years later, they wish they could just move on. In West Philadelphia, Robin Taylor, KYW3, Eyewitness News. Meanwhile, a rally in Prague in the Czech Republic protested the death sentence against Mumia Abu Jamal. A couple dozen members of an anarchist movement say they want the U.S. government to free Mumia, who was convicted in the 1981 shooting death of Philadelphia police officer Daniel Faulkner. Another rally through the streets of Philadelphia this afternoon, this one against violence to women. Organizers say domestic violence is now the single greatest cause of injury to women. Women and men march down Broad Street through North Philadelphia to demonstrate their solidarity, calling what they call a day of peace for mothers. An Eyewitness News update now on a deadly crash we first reported yesterday. This 18-wheeler jackknifed and smashed into a video store on Bridge Street in Lambertville. A store clerk was pinned in the wreckage, and last night the clerk, 54-year-old Joan Escher, was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. The truck driver was treated and released. Two other drivers suffered minor injuries. A dramatic canoe rescue is caught on tape. A man is pinned under a canoe in freezing cold water, and at first, no one is around him to help. And do you love the beach? You can love it even longer in Ocean City, New Jersey. Stay with us. Experience the greatest story of all time as it's never been told before. Gary Oldman, Jacqueline Bissett, and Jeremy Sisto star in the CBS miniseries event, Jesus, Sunday. Then on Eyewitness News at 11, turning hardship into harmony. Local high school students with soaring talent and a mission to save their school. An Eyewitness News special assignment. Pat Shiraki explores modern miracles, Sunday on Eyewitness News at 11. There's that helicopter again. The 2000 Intrigue by Oldsmobile, equipped with an award-winning 215-horsepower twin-cam V6, which beat the top-selling cars in its class in acceleration from 0 to 60. Good to know when you need to make a fast getaway. Now Philadelphia-area residents can get 0.9% APR financing for up to 60 months on the award-winning 2000 Intrigue. Those telemarketers don't give up, do they? When people perform together, extraordinary things can happen. Come see how the 40,000 people of U.S. Airways are reorchestrating an airline around our customers. Because we know that your performance 
could be riding on ours. Excuse me. You forgot your music. Thank you. Just playing my part. U.S. Airways, come visit us. What do you have for us today, Bill? Now lie still. Ever wish there were two of you? One for the everyday. The other to get away. To spend time as a family. Bush Gardens is just the place to do it. Have fun. Reconnect. It's a getaway no family would want to miss. Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Come together. For millions of drivers, this is the most trusted minivan ever, the Dodge Caravan. For millions of drivers, this is a symbol of safety and security. Recently, AAA named Grand Caravan top minivan for the best combination of features like performance, design, quality, value, and safety. So according to AAA, everything else is a B. Now get a $1,750 cash allowance on Dodge Grand Caravan. Back now on Eyewitness News at 6, take a look at this. You can see a man's arm waving for help from underneath an overturned canoe. This is on the Clackamas River in Oregon. A news helicopter spotted the man. Now, it turns out he couldn't swim, but he paddles his way to a bank. However, he was so weak and cold in the 48-degree water that he fell back in. Luckily, minutes later, a rescue boat came along and pulled him to safety. The man is in stable condition and should be released from the hospital today. With the help of cooler temperatures and weaker winds, firefighters in Los Alamos, New Mexico, are finally making headway in the battle against that raging wildfire. But the extent of the damage is overwhelming. The fire has now consumed more than 35,000 acres and destroyed 260 homes. Officials had planned to let residents back into the area today, but have now decided it is still not safe. Officially, only 5% of the fire is under control. It was set last week by National Park officials as a controlled burn, but heavy winds turned it into a disaster. And the Vatican has now revealed the so-called third secret of Fatima. The Pope is in Fatima, Portugal, to beatify a boy and girl who said they spoke to the Virgin Mary 81 years ago. Believers hold that the Virgin Mary revealed three secrets to them. Two of them have been reported, a vision of hell that was interpreted as World War II and the rise and fall of Soviet communism. The third secret, a bishop clothed in white falling to the ground in a burst of gunfire. The church says that was a prediction of the 1981 assassination attempt against the Pope. Well, preparations are underway in the nation's capital for the Million Mom March. Mothers from all over the nation will converge on Washington tomorrow to call for stricter gun control laws. The moms want uniform licensing and registration laws as well as child safety measures. Another big event tomorrow right here in Philadelphia. It's the annual Race for the Cure sponsored by KYW3. Live coverage starts at 6 tomorrow morning and the race starts at 8.30 bright and early. For more information about how to register, log on to our website at kyw.com. And we'll be hearing a lot more about that I right at 11. I see you tomorrow. there. Hopefully. Well, we know we'll see you there with your sneakers on. <laughs> and up next, Carol Erickson and the stormy KYW forecast. The Sixers fighting for the playoff live. Steve Bucci with the story up next. There's a car out there people are talking about. This is a bold move for Cadillac. It's the only car in its class with the executive assistance of OnStar Standard. OnStar. What is this boldly restyled car that's making the press take notice? It's the 2000 Katerra. And now, you can get a Katerra with a very attractive lease. Call for important lease details. The 2000 Katerra. The power of and The fusion of design and technology. Cadillac. Try Rita's new cookies and cream ice, made with Oreo cookies. Get your free Oreo cookie two-pack with cookies and cream purchase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was tired of dainty dinner rolls. I'm always on the old robot. Not the donkey. Unless I'm not doing your stuff for inside. I'm on the floor. 
Introducing new Amoroso's Hardy Country, thicker crust, firmer texture, irresistible old world flavor. Now you've got freedom of choice, original Amoroso's or new Amoroso's Hardy Country. Oh my God, the so hot in the mouth. It's the longest lasting full-size pickup with overall the most powerful line of engines. And now that the 2001 model is available with a higher output 5.9 liter Cummins diesel, you know this truck is really going to clean up. Dodge Ram. Now get a $1,500 cash allowance on 2000 model year Rams. Well, if you head to the Jersey Shore for the lazy days of summer, you can stay lazy longer on the Ocean City beaches. Ocean City officials say they will keep lifeguards on the beach until 8 p.m. this summer to protect swimmers who stay late. They say they've seen more and more people come to the beach later in the day when it's cooler and the crowds are not as big. Sounds and that's like a, a good, good move. Good Could plan. Save, uh, oh, yeah. save a lot of lives. Yeah. Exactly. Switching to, uh, to weather, weather, we're uh, told some severe weather. weather is on the way. Carol Erickson joins us now with the forecast. Carol? Yeah, we certainly are seeing some rough weather. You can kind of see it reflected here on uh, CityCam. You can see these skies are starting to to uh, look like uh, something is approaching and something definitely is. But at the shore where you're farther away from this system, uh, it's still beautiful in Atlantic City. People are out on the beach enjoying themselves, but uh, they too could be seeing some of these storms. Let's get right to the, uh, the numbers right now. We've got 83 degrees still in Philadelphia. Warm day. Humidity 65%. Our winds out of the east-southeast at 3 in the barometer right now in the process of falling. 83 Philadelphia, 79 Mount Holly, 80 degrees in Wilmington, and we've got dew points that are way up there in the upper 60s, lower 70s. What that means is there is a lot of instability and moisture in this atmosphere for this cold front to work with as it moves through. And it is certainly uh, knocking on our doorstep right now. You can see here on our sat satellite map that through uh, some of these sections of New Jersey, they're probably saying, what? It looks beautiful here. Yes, but look to the west and you can see the area of these dense white clouds. We've got some massive thunderstorms moving towards the area. This is reflected. I'll show you a wide view uh, first. We're not alone in all of this, as you can see. Uh, certainly a lot of storms going on through New York State. State. And then we have this band through here as this cold front makes its progression in our direction. So we still have uh, until 6.30 a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Cecil County, Maryland. This is a, a storm system that we've been watching that has been bringing some golf ball sized hail. So you know what that can do. If you've got a car outside, uh, wouldn't be a bad idea if you can find some place to put it. You might want to bring it in so that you don't get a, a ding in it if we start to see these storms uh, fire up through here. Now at this point it looks almost like they're starting to move just towards the east. Could they just skirt the Wilmington area? Yes. And just just south of Philadelphia, yes. But then as you head towards the north, we've got another batch of storms. In fact, a, a severe thunderstorm warning just expired four minutes ago for uh, northwestern Berks County. But still, you are looking at some very severe weather here around the Allentown area and just to the west. Now, let me widen this picture out one more time so you can see the area that, we, uh, that we're showing through Cecil County, Maryland, and then as we go through uh, the Allentown area. But then even as you go back a little bit, you've got another batch of this uh, system as it works its way through. This is uh, right now resulting in lots of thunderstorm warnings and watches in the area. We've got severe thunderstorm watches where you see all of this orange, where you see the yellow. We are looking at severe thunderstorm warnings. So look for the possibility of some hail, maybe even uh, golf ball sized hail, some moderate winds and even some lightning out of this system as it works its way through. The, the good thing about this system is that it's going to be moving relatively rapidly. So by 11 o'clock tonight, all of those watches are going to be expiring. Uh, could they be put on a little bit later? Uh, it's possible, but at this point, it looks as if all of these watch boxes are going to be expiring at 11 o'clock tonight, and then we see a much different weather pattern move into the area. So for tonight, thunderstorms, hail, strong winds, temperatures, once this is through, go down to between 55 and 58 degrees, and we'll look for clearing skies. Race for the cure, Mother's Day tomorrow, gorgeous gorgeous day, breezy to gusty wind, 73 degrees, sunny skies, so we're kind of paying the price tonight with the weather, but uh, we certainly reap the benefits tomorrow. Then on Monday, 70 degrees, look how much cooler it stays, uh, and then Tuesday, 68 degrees, Wednesday, 68 degrees, Thursday, 75 degrees, so just make sure that you can get into cover uh, tonight as these uh, storm systems work their way through. And then good weather for the race for the cure. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah, moving to sports and uh, good weather playoffs. for basketball. Yeah, right? Fighting so. for their lives. Huh? Hopefully it'll help the and they're still fighting <laughs> and still fighting. They don't want this season to end. They're still in progress. Final seconds of the game. Sixers up by one. At least that was where it was when I walked out here. 
they, they led by as many as 19 at one point, 11 at the half. Geiger and Reggie Miller ejected for fighting. What's that, Paul? You tell me now the game is now over? Game is officially over. The Sixers have won. Let's go to the videotape, as someone once said. He watched a number of his former Temple teammates. He says, might be my last chance to see the Sixers this season. Sixers came out smoking first half. Ratliff jamming. And then it's Allen off the steal, and he'll be jamming as well. Allen Iverson all alone and throwing it down. And it was all Sixers, led by as many as 19, 11 at the half. And then in the third quarter, it gets ugly. Matt Geiger with a hard foul on Reggie Miller. Reggie doesn't like it. They go at it. Both guys ejected as a result. And that's when the Pacers come to life. Without Miller, a 15-0 run. Jalen Rose for three, cuts the lead to three. They actually went up by as many as five. Now, late in the game, Allen in and out. Tyrone Hill right there to put it back up and in. And I believe that's the game-winning margin. The Sixers win it. And they force a game four, or a game five, or uh, they force a, what was this? This was game four, right? So it will, they force a game five, and we'll have more on today's game coming up tonight at 11. Last night, Anthony Carter with the unbelievable shot. Watch this shot. This is incredible. Behind the backboard, over, and in. <laughs> and that lifts the heat to the win over the Knicks last night. So they lead that series now two games to one. All right, what are we doing now? We're going to the Lakers and Phoenix. Okay, Kobe, Phil, and the boys taking a commanding three games to none lead over Phoenix. Shaq with 37 points in that one. And Kobe, the kid from Lower Marion, doing his thing, pumped in 25. Lakers win at Phoenix. They lead that series three games to none. Flyers getting ready for game one with New Jersey. It is tomorrow at three. Keith Primo skated today, but his status will be a game-time decision. Primo recovering from a concussion. Flyers always have a devil of a time with New Jersey. Remember this? Blankow knocking it into his own net. The puck always seems to take a funny bounce when the Flyers play the Devils. They were one and four against him in the regular season. Boy, here's the Flyers' Keith Jones on the Devils. New Jersey is obviously the, the uh, class of the East, and it's going to be a great test for us against a team that uh, is playing on all cylinders right now. They stumbled a little bit at the end of the regular season, but have been unstoppable so far in the playoffs. So we've got a real challenge ahead of us here. And that challenge starts tomorrow at 3. You know, it's one of the traditions of Boathouse Row. The Dad Vale Regatta. Hundreds of college crews from around the nation and Canada competing. And the Temple Men's Varsity 8 gunning for its 11th straight Dad Vale Championship. That's Temple, middle of the screen. And its opponents were up to Schuylkill without a paddle against them today. The Temple Men's 8 rowing gently down the stream three seconds ahead of the field to win the Dad Vale Regatta. They own this event. They take home the cup. Again, the annual Dad Vale Regatta, named after a pioneer in the sport, a coach whose nickname was Dad, his last name was Vale. Right. Dad Vale. Makes Thank sense. You. Hence the Dad Vale, vale Regatta. regatta. Hey, any you. chance <laughs> Reggie Miller won't be around for game five? Possibility. Possibility that he could be uh, suspended for the next game, but yeah, we'll see what we happens. We don't endorse that kind that of thing. Could mean, but, uh, that could mean that guy could be suspended too. All right. Thanks a lot. Coach. All right. Up next on Eyewitness News, how would you call a pig? Pig, pig, pig. <laughs> like that, unfortunately, we'll take you to a hog calling contest when we return. Hey, Philadelphia, KYW3 wants you to be a contestant on Hollywood Squares. For your chance to try out, call 215-923-9415 and catch Hollywood Squares weeknights at 7.30 right here on KYW3. Are you or someone you care for increasingly forgetful, repeating questions, or having trouble finding words? When these problems increase gradually and interfere with daily life, it may not be normal aging. It could be Alzheimer's disease. There is no cure, but today there's help, including Aricept, a once-a-day prescription medicine. Aricept is clinically proven to treat symptoms of mild to moderate Alzheimer's. Aricept is generally well-tolerated, but may not be for everyone. People at risk for ulcers should tell their doctors because their condition may get worse. Some people may experience fainting. Common side effects are nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. Others include insomnia, muscle cramps, fatigue, and loss of appetite. In studies, these were usually mild and temporary. 
So if you think memory problems could be Alzheimer's, see a doctor. Ask about the number one prescribed medicine for Alzheimer's, Aricept, medicine to remember. Night, Ted. See you tomorrow. Son, there's no substitute for hard work. Nothing good comes easy. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Good night. Then treat yourself to something really nice. The roomy, luxurious Accord sedan. Thanks for the advice, Dad. The Honda Accord for the year 2000. Now get special APR financing as low as 3.9% for 36 months on new four-cylinder Accords. We've incrementalized this whole issue about gun violence and gun flow in America. All of us support trigger locks and registration at gun shows. The fact is, is until we have registration and licensing, all guns, we are going to have an uncontrollable situation where people who are not responsible have access at them. Old ideas, new answers. John Corzine for Senate. Well, the moment you've all been waiting for, the winners of the Moulton, Alabama hog calling contest. There you have it. That lucky woman walked away with a coveted hog calling trophy. Screaming for swine is one of the area's favorite pastimes. Dozens of people entered the competition, which was held during Older Americans Day. We quickly want to check in with Carol Erickson on the stormy forecast. Yeah, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning right now for northern Lehigh County and northern Berks County, and that is in effect until uh, 7 o'clock tonight. For the rest of the area, a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until about 11 o'clock. Right. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. Carol. And that's Eyewitness News at 6. I'm Wayne Scott. And I'm Denise Saunders. Join us tonight for Eyewitness News at 11. Good night, everyone. Hi, I'm Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight. Please join the women of Eyewitness News in this year's Race for the Cure. It's on Mother's Day, May 14th.